Hey guys, welcome to the Ash vs. Evil Dead After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. Season 2, Episode 3, Last Call. We'll be breaking down the episode and talking about our thoughts and predictions for the future with our special guest, Ted Raimi. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I feel like this was like a, 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 a like really redneck saddle ranch situation that was going on with people riding the bull. Like, have you ever done that at Saddle Ranch? Like, had a bull riding competition with somebody, like, be it in West Hollywood or on City Walk? <laughs> Yeah, um, with my mom, because the stars won, I made a drunken bet that if my hockey team won, I would ride the bull. <laughs> and how did you do? All right. Awesome. I mean, I am from Texas. It should be in my blood. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I have an uncle who's a bull rider, but... <laughs> nice. And you, uh, you inherited some of that, uh, some of that bull riding, sure. uh, uh, inclination <laughs> in your genes. Hey guys, welcome to the Ash vs. Evil Dead After Show here on After Buzz TV. We're super, I'm super excited to be here. I was gone last week. I'm, uh, I'm very happy to be back. I'm very happy they acknowledge the existence of Cheryl, which I was saying I really wanted to happen on episode one. Uh, I'm Emma Fife. I, you can find me all over the internet to at my name, Emma Fife, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. Standing in for uh, Megan Salinas, who is still out on a secret mission. That's oh, no. not, she's like on vacation in Vancouver. So, uh, and I am joined by a wonderful panel of hosts this evening, Lex Michael. That is me. I am Lex <laughs> Michael. All of her social media, at the Lex Michael. And you guys, I am feeling just so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lucretia Lyon. Hey guys, since I'm Lucretia Lyon, you can always find me at L-A-C-R-E-T-I-A-L-Y-O-N anywhere on the internet, since there is only one. And I have feelings as well. And Lex knows. I don't really have those a lot. <laughs> when, it, when it happens, it is quite an exceptional occurrence. Very... We should all stand and take note. We should, yeah. we should. And of course, our wonderful guest star joining us in studio this evening, Ted Raimi. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I am at Ted Raimi everywhere in the universe, so yes. there's no need to be confused about that. And uh, for those That's of you guys uh, who are watching live, uh, we are keeping up with the live chat. Lucretia's nope. got that up on her computer there. We're also following along with that hashtag on Twitter, ABTV Evil Dead so you can tweet your thoughts at us and you can also type your thoughts to us in the chat. I'm sure Lucretia will share them with us uh, throughout the episode. Of course, if you have any mm -hmm. questions that you'd like to ask our uh, our guest star here, you're more than welcome to do so. And before we begin, I do have a question for all of yes. you guys. Yes. Now, I know all of you guys are very experienced YouTubers. You're yes. all very ex <laughs> you've been out there a long, long time in this business. <laughs> so I do have a question. Here we are yep. after Buzz TV. This is just awesome. We've got the high-tech equipment. We're here in this amazing <laughs> studio here in Hollywood, California. It's all very impressive. All of us have our iPhones and <laughs> galaxies. And none of it exploded so far, no. so that's a good thing. But I do have a question for you. Here we are, um, streaming live to millions of people, and yet we're wearing essentially 1941 <laughs> World War II audio equipment. Listen, listen. I mean, this is what they gave Sherman Tank commanders <laughs> to take out tiger tanks. Can we not update this crap? What is up with this? I don't understand. Is this for the look? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're trying to get that, you know, like a, just like a hint of that, like, old 1940s radio play. You know? Exactly. Nice try. Yeah. Nice try. It's just some old ass yeah. equipment, I think, is what we're talking about. Here. An attempt was made. Yeah. I feel that headphones and printers are the two things that are way far behind on the time. You I think? Yeah. I mean, people yeah. were going like, yeah. turn it down, turn it down, tell them, I got a tank. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of there. I mean, that's what they were using these things at. It's crazy. <laughs> So obviously, uh, uh, we all have a lot of feelings uh, about this episode, yeah. mostly inspired by events that transpired at the end of the episode. However, yeah. let's let's start back at the beginning. The the, the, the very sort of simple, uh, inciting incident uh, of this episode is that Ash's car was stolen. And this is problematic for a couple of reasons. Number one, because like it's the only possession in his life he really, truly loves. And number two, the Necronomicon was kind of in that car. <laughs> Yeah, which was a great idea, especially when the car you love so much to put that book that has a mind of its own in it. The 73 uh, Oldsmobile Delta 88 is what it is, and it's literally appeared in every Sam Raimi movie, right? Just like you. you know. uh, <laughs> just about, yes. I've, yeah. I've been in just about yeah. every, every, 
Mo- well, not all of his movies, but, yeah. but most of his yeah. movies. Yeah. yeah, I'm in most of them. And that car, although I think that car beats me. I think it's got more appearances than I do. Um, I don't know how to feel about that. That <laughs> car used yeah. to belong to our mother. Oh, okay. That used to be our mother's car. Now, believe it or not, that gigantic car, which seems massive by today's standards, was right. actually just a family car back in the early 70s. It would have appeared completely normal and not like some crazy ass, old, yellow, <laughs> right. weird, ugly 70s car. It right. would have been completely invisible, like a Chevy Malibu would be no. today. Sure. So, so, But as time goes on, you know, it just becomes this machine that, that, that Ash winds up loving. So, yeah. Now, the car that was in the series, is that the car that was your, like, family car? It is the very same one. Uh, <laughs> so you, you flew that car out to New Zealand? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, not it wasn't flown. Okay. Um, but, well, if it was, it would have needed, you know, first class. Sure, and sure, of course. Leg room <laughs> right, and right, all right. that. Drinks, star treatment because it's a star yeah but it was shipped by a boat you okay. know to new zealand and it got there and uh but it's the same car you open that thing up and it, the crappy buzzer still goes <laughs> you know when you open the thing up it still has uh the crappy radio which still surprisingly works although it's been worked on in many movies so right. it's had some updates okay but the interior still smells like you know uh the jimmy Carter era, you know, it still does, and right. it still still smells like that. So. Yeah, I did like uh, Kelly's reaction, yeah. sp- specifically in regards to the radio when she, when you know, Pablo was talking to her, being like, "Oh man, he loves that car," and she's like, "Doesn't even have a CD player though." Yeah, like, I love that line. Yeah. I love that line too. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a, it, it is mind boggling. I think even for those days, it would have been crap because it didn't have an eight track player. Yeah. <laughs> Which it could have, but yeah, it didn't. It literally yeah. just had a radio. It's just a radio. <laughs> and as someone who loves classic cars, that was the one time I totally didn't agree with Kelly. And Ringy, uh 90998 in the chat points out, oh, Ash's Ringy. car was like the child of Christine and the Ghost Rider car that was pissed watching Maximum Overdrive. That was so funny. And Except, Lexa, wait, yeah. wait. I don't think Ghost Rider had a car. The new right? Ghost Rider, the, the newest oh, incarnation of Ghost Rider the in the comics. Yep. Oh, he does. Uh, Robbie Reyes is a new character as of about 2015 oh, yeah. last year. And the version they're currently doing on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has this flaming muscle car that was very reminiscent of the possessed Actually, Delta. normally I would say that's a cop-out yeah. from the writers, but that sounds cool. Yeah. And it's a 69 Charger, which is cool. And, that sounds pretty you know. cool. So what was yeah. great is like, yeah, so this car obviously has a very long and storied history, both specifically within the Evil Dead franchise and obviously throughout Sam's filmography. Right. I love building an episode around the emotional loss of this car. It feels like a big, like a cookie yeah. for fans. It is, it, it is, it is. And I think Ash, you know, um, loves it and I think and I think any classic car lover can understand yeah, the yeah. loss of that car. Also, you know, a, a possessed vehicle is nothing new in yeah. terms of I mean it's it's in a long line of of uh, I think supernatural vehicles and we can go all the way back I suppose to uh, ghost stories about yeah, chariots yeah. sure, and horses and we move forward you know to actually the father I would say of the possessed car idea would have to be Richard Matheson the great author Richard Matheson who in the late 60s wrote a, a short story called Duel which was made into a TV movie directed Spielberg. by Steven Spring. now right. that car wasn't technically possessed but it was about this truck that was harassing this m- m- right. sort of uh, middle class dude in this crappy Pinto, I think it probably was. Um, and there we kind of move on to the car. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> James Brolin, not yeah. so great. Yep. And then I think Stephen King finally culminated in the late 70s with Christine, yep. mm-hmm. right? Which was made into a great John Carpenter right. picture mm-hmm. with right. uh, Keith Gordon. Yeah, and that's, yeah. that's an amazing one. And so here we are in this long line of it. But I think, I know I'm in it, and so I don't, it's really kind of. <laughs> Weird for me to be commenting how good I thought it was, right. but that all those car effects and the writers did such a such a great job putting that together, and um, I feel really fortunate being a fan of the genre yeah. that here we are at the end of this um, a very interesting uh, sort of line of possessed vehicles, and and uh, I got to be in this particular episode, so it's really exciting. But at the same time, I, I think that that's something that the Evil Dead franchise has always done really well is kind of play on those classic ideas of horror so in this case it was like we had the possessed car and not only did we have the possessed car on top of that we had the you know the dead teenager trope basically. Yeah, that's right. 
I mean, these kids were so doomed when they took that car. <laughs> yeah, they were doomed. <laughs> yeah, and John Doe points out, one thing I find funny is that the teenagers seem to not have progressed from the 80s. Just yes. like Ash, they seem straight out of a Friday the 13th film. <laughs> they do. Oh my gosh. They do. Yeah. But and it's it, part of the charm. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and it was even like, you know, you had films like... Um, Cabin in the Woods kind of calling yes. out that whole sort of sequence of events in which everybody dies, in, you know, uh, and that 100% happened in this episode. <laughs> where it was like, you know, the, the slutty girl went first yeah. and... Uh, Oh, oh, yeah. Horror movie morals. Yeah. I just love them. I just watched like some new one called The Final Girls. It's essentially about going back to the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is, and, yeah. and this is classic Western, you know, tale in yeah. that in that if you do bad, mm -hmm. if you if you are immoral, you will die. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Now, at, at, conversely, like some, for example, like Asian pictures, you don't have to do anything except be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You don't look at you look at your <laughs> smartphone wrong, and you will die. In those pictures, you know, like like the like uh, whatever Grudge, all those incarnations yeah, Ringo, of uh, yeah. Ring, yeah, yeah, all those ones. So it's fascinating, but yeah, but you know, the guy uh, got a blowjob and it all started there, and that's the end of it. Man. <laughs> yeah. That as somebody, I have a pretty high threshold for real messed up, grisly content yeah. in TV sure, and films. Sure. Oh boy, did I physically react to that? I think everybody yeah. did. I don't know. Uh, I was sitting with a couple guys during that one, and we, we all kind of cringe. And I, I hadn't seen that before. It was upsetting. And, it's, <laughs> and the thing is that, like, even going into it, you just knew that's a hundred percent where it was gonna go. Like, yeah. as soon as she started reading sure. from the Necronomicon, it was like, uh, yeah. oh, this is gonna end <laughs> poorly. But we did get introduced. Uh, to Lacey, who seems to have survived this whole ordeal, and she is the daughter of the sheriff and the prototype Linda, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, and what I like is John Doe also brought up maybe she's actually Ash's daughter. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Humming. <laughs> <laughs> Plot twist. I mean, at least then he would still perhaps have some family alive <laughs> since as of the end of this episode it's uh, not looking oh, my heart. so great for him. I know. <laughs> I was like we got Lee Majors. Yeah. And now oh, there he goes. No, oh, by Lee. Yeah, oh. We don't. Uh, but, but well you know it is Ash versus the evil dead. The word dead is in there. Yeah. Yeah. That and is the word true. evil is in there. Yeah. So that which was dead it can again become alive. That is true. Now, I'm not prognosticating anything about no, future episodes. No, of course not. Of course not. But you should never feel too bad for a character that's died because it's Ash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You might, you know. Uh, you know, you might see them again. That's, that's right. Slightly altered, uh, but, you know, <laughs> everybody gets a second chance at life. Reconstituted is a good word, I think, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's what I like about soaps and sci-fi, and that's why I try to stick to watching because no one's ever really dead. It was stuff no, like yeah, yeah. De death yeah. is like uh, yeah. it's it's temporary. Yeah. It's just sort of oh, flex, like flexible. Yeah. What a nice view yeah. to have about yeah. death. Yeah. Which I had your view about. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd actually get some sleep at night. If I was yeah. 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 Well, just yeah. constantly like have the weight of your mortality hanging over you. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. It's as as in comics as well. It's very much yeah. you're not you're not gone. You're not off the table. You're just like you're over there for a yeah. little bit. And when we need you, you're you're gonna come back. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, you know, so the the teenagers are off getting killed by the possessed car. Meanwhile, Ash has come up with this brilliant plan <laughs> to try to get the kids to show up with the car and he's decided to call in reinforcements and uh, he uh, rings up his old high school buddy Chet who of course <laughs> yeah. you uh, yourself play on That's the show right. yes. and uh, and they are they basically come up with this great plan that they're gonna relive their glory days like when they were in high school and throw a killer party that is obviously gonna convince these cool delinquents to turn up. Right, and the, yeah. the secret ingredient to the party yes. are drinks laced with special K, which is yes. ketamine, mm, you yes. know. Uh, and you saw in the episode that uh, Kelly gets uh, K-hold. That's, uh, <laughs> oh, that, that's the uh, technical term. That right? is the technical term, and um, there, there really was a drink called Pink fuck apparently right. uh, in in the seven. Can we say that? On yeah, this? You, yeah, yeah. We try excellent. to keep it the language yeah. of the show, so we're good. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, so kids, uh, if you heard me say that, just turn it off now and then turn it back on when your parents leave. That's what I was <laughs> um, but uh, there is that. It really was a thing. I think I think the the term pink fuck was came up. Excuse me, was uh, invented by. Or rather, re, re remembered by my brother Ivan, who was one of the writers on the show. Mm. This was a popular. Concoction they used to make at Michigan State University in the 70s, apparently. So it really, oh, it really uh -huh. did happen. And you, and I, I don't know who came up with K Hold. I think that might have been Bruce Campbell. <laughs> yeah. came up with that, one. Um, that was pretty fun. We laughed a lot shooting that one. 
Yeah. We laughed a lot. But the fact that Dana DiLorenzo was so good about, you know, taking that joke so well, <laughs> and she was hilarious doing that trip out scene. I yeah, that say. trip out scene yeah. was, was awesome. It was. Yeah. Now, I was sort of wondering, like, Chet and Ash seem to be, like, cool. Like, they, yeah. I don't know, maybe if they just know how to, like, sip it more slowly, but, like, they did not immediately go into, like... Well, I think if you take enough of that stuff, <laughs> you become, you know, I guess a little desensitized to it. It's like when you start learning to drink, I suppose. Mm. It's like that. You know, you know how much you can take. Right. Um, on the other hand, they're just burnouts. <laughs> Yeah. By nature, they're just burnout, so they I think they just like it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and Ruby thinks uh, in a in what's really quite a compliment for her that it's not the worst plan she's ever heard. <laughs> I love that. It's like it's not the worst one. We'll go with that for now. Or more yeah. generous than yeah. she usually is when yes. she has an idea. Yes, that is definitely true. And uh, so they do. They 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 put together this party, as I say, at kind of the the like super redneck saddle ranch style bar. And uh, and and it's a uh, it's uh, it really brings everybody together. They got like the football kids there and the cool goth kids, and then uh, Ash's dad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I love is like because I'm from a place sort of like Elk Grove, a small place like Tyler, Texas, and I went to a small college town, Denton, Texas, uh, the University of North Texas. We have I said Texas too many times. But mean Green <laughs> that's Punch. Because that's because you're a, from Texas. Yeah, yeah exactly. Say. Uh, but yeah, Mean Green Punch is pretty much the same thing. Only we have Xanax now because ketamine's too hard to get. That. But yeah, it does bring everyone <laughs> together. Guys, your stoners, your goss, your football people. Everybody loves to drink and the Green yeah. Equalizer. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Yeah. That is absolutely true. Even the old people in the town will come. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's quite a town you live yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> or they, that, uh, yeah. that you're from. Yes. Yeah. Um, you don't also have, like, a, a lingering uh, reputation there like Ash does in Elk Grove, do you? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know you, Lucretia. Yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> so, yes, they, they throw this party, and Ash's dad uh, shows up to the party, and he basically tasks Ruby with distracting him so he can go around and try to figure out who where the kids are that stole his car because clearly they are at this party uh and so uh his, his plan is to play a little uh drinking game that's right yes <laughs> in which he asked the most borderline belligerently leading yes. questions <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the only kind of questions Ash knows how to ask. No. He's no, not a very he, subtle guy. No. He may not be a very smart guy, but he's a very determined mm -hmm. um, and honest guy. Yeah. Um, he's just a loud mouth who, unfortunately, is our only chance to save the world. That's yeah. a problem with Ash. Yeah. Yeah. He is very much a, a to-the-point kind of guy. Now, this is, the, this is the first time that you've gotten to be sort of in cahoots with Ash. Normally, you're trying to kill him. Oh. Uh, <laughs> What? <laughs> I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like, going going back to like you know earlier incarnations. Oh, of other Evil movies Day. and yes, TV yes, shows. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm no, always I'm not talking to... about Chet. I'm talking about you. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of a, mil, a, a lot of other movies where I've and TV shows where I've tried to kill them and destroy them, and uh, um, I guess even especially the Evil Dead pictures in um, Evil Dead uh, Two. Uh, I play Henrietta. Yes. <laughs> yes. And in that picture, it's me versus Bruce's Henrietta. Right. Uh, now I'm his pal, um, which he has to sort of help along, I guess. So it's a little <laughs> bit different. Um, but weirdly, Henrietta is, I was just talking about this with somebody, was the sixth character I've played in this universe of Ash. It's really, it's great for a character actor like myself. I'm a lucky guy. Yeah, yeah. So lucky. Because, you know, character actors may get to play two characters on right. a TV show or a movie. Right. Maybe three if they're really, really fortunate. I got to play six. It's unbelievable that they these guys were so stupid to put me in so many. <laughs> those chumps put me in so many. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm so grateful to all, all of those guys, Rob Tappert, Sam Raimi, yeah. um, Bruce Campbell, for doing that. Uh, to make a character actor like myself so happy to do this, yeah. but yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, and I mean, obviously, you've been very heavily involved with Evil Dead since, since the get-go. Day one, I have. I pretty much day one. Yeah, it was pretty much day one. So I was a little kid in Evil Dead one, and then uh, Evil Dead two. I was about twenty, you know. Yeah. And um, and now it's just as hard as it was then. It's thirty years later, so they tried to kill me, you know. But right. But uh, but it's great. And now the the great thing is now all these years, thirty years later. 30 years later, <laughs> it's something to see. <laughs> you never see nothing. No. Uh, but all these years later, we have not been made that crazy by it. This special K helps. But um, 
is that it's gratifying to see this new generation in here mm, yeah. of these actors who um, you wonder if, when you do a show, can they, can they straddle that line between comedy and horror? It's, yes. You never know. And, it, and man, it's a trick because you go too far off into the horror world and it just becomes, well, it's just horror. That's yeah. all there is to yeah. it. It becomes yeah. spooky, and, which is fine. And you go the other way into comedy with all that gore, it becomes positively stupid and yeah. not funny. <laughs> but straddling that line uh, is a trick. And um, these guys, uh, Ray Santiago and Dana DiLorenzo, do it so well. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Ray is, has to be the, the leading man. I think Dana may have a slightly harder road to hoe because it's always harder for girls in this business. It's just, it's just the way it is. People double criticize them for a thousand things. And mm-hmm. she really does a fantastic job um, of being the maybe the most badass chick on TV yeah. today. Oh, oh yeah. I, I would say, I mean, she's got my vote anyway. Yeah. But, and, um, but, you know, I'd say her and Lucy are pretty neck and neck. Yeah. But Lucy, you know, but uh, <laughs> as far as being the yeah. new girl, as yeah. far as a new girl award, she probably gets it. Um, also, I would say that, <laughs> I would say that Dana DiLorenzo is... Uh, the female white Samuel L. Jackson. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes. Because I say I don't know anyone who slings four-letter words that well. Yeah. I mean, we can all, as actors, you see it on a page, sure, and you're like, sure. "Oh, good. I get to be all badass. <laughs> yeah. Check this shit out." But <laughs> it, it doesn't really. It's, if it is an right. integral part of who you are as an actor, it yeah. typically falls on its face very badly, and. Uh, Miss DiLorenzo really is able to hit that, and yeah. I'm not sure how, but uh, but it's great. I mean, I, I hey, look, one of you editors out there, okay, who've downloaded this episode, <laughs> do this, okay? Go find, I can't believe nobody has done this, and shame on you guys for not doing it. You're sitting there watching Evil Dead, rewatching it a thousand times with your freaking eye movies right in front of you. So go cut every swear word Dana ever said oh. and will ever say. Stick it on a reel. Make it good. Don't just mm. cut the words. Give a little bit of head and the tail to the cuts. I'm telling you, I will watch that 50,000 times to make you the number one bit because that's going to be funny. Yeah, Kelpie is the biggest badass on the show. She and, is. and when you've got Ash and Ruby, it, that's a hard feat. But it she is. really is the coolest one. Well, she is. And, and I think what, what is, again, like most impressive about it is, as you were saying, Ted, it's like she's she's the new kid on the block. She's I mean, the new kid on the block. Bruce and Lucy have such a legacy of being total badass. They do. They do. And now, you know, I've, I've got a legacy just with those guys of being yeah. an imbecile, so it's nothing new for me. <laughs> But uh, Ray and and Dana are the new blood on that show. Yeah. And look, when when there's you know, look when Bruce and I have tubes coming in and out of our butt, not our nose at the hospital, <laughs> gurgling up our last breaths, those guys will be picking the third generation of Evil Dead, you know, people, yeah. which is be which will be awesome. You yeah. know, it's, it'll be a great day for them, not yeah. for us. Well, know? it is so cool to see because Lucretia and I were talking mm. last week. We were holding down the fort <laughs> by our lonesome. <laughs> we were talking about specifically about Ray and Dana and how they so came to the plate ready to hit the, uh, the metaphor is weird. Yeah. They're great. They, they totally stepped up and then they came back in season two with what yeah. feels like an even greater sense of confidence and ease to such an extent that I could easily see the two of them carrying their own show eventually. Like they you could. Said. Yeah. Then that's also great too, you know, for, look, I mean, um, any of us who live here in Hollywood who have friends, I, I, I don't know if you guys are... So, in, I know you guys have had a great deal of success uh, mm-hmm. online, but uh, just having friends in the trenches here in Hollywood as actors themselves, yeah. many of them Hispanic, man, it is rough. And only recently that, that those guys have not gotten stuff, I'm going to cut you, man. Yep. Yeah. That's all they've yeah. ever had, to, the only parts they've ever given and only offered up till just quite recently. So Ray is on this cusp, I think, and it's a wonderful place to be. Yeah. And I hope, I hope that we get so many more... Um, parts written for for that kind of a dude yeah. as opposed to I'm going to cut you man which is no, unbelievable I mean, I mean, that's pa- all they ever Pablo got. Pablo is, the, is you know? the polar opposite of that you know he is very much kind he's of a like a complex character yeah. yeah he's 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 the he's got like a very high like emotional intelligence and yeah, he he, he just adds like this layer of heart to the group that yep. that would yeah. be sorely missed without him well so. you know i think you guys interviewed ray if i'm not mistaken yeah, yes. yeah. oh you know he's a he's a complex guy he's a very yeah. smart guy and yeah. uh, he's, he's, he's perfect for that part yeah no he uh he's he's uh awesome but uh since we were talking about uh mm-hmm. kelly being such a badass how about that interaction that she and ruby had uh outside of the bar 
uh, during the party. I thought that was just so fitting because they clearly were. I mean, even though at the beginning Kelly was like still coming down from her. Wait, what? What was the uh, the technical term for it? K hole. Yeah. You get K hole. <laughs> right, right. That's so when she... you fall down the ketamine hole. So, in in fact, uh, that ketamine. For those who don't know, <laughs> now I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I get to not be the drug back. Ketamine, <laughs> for those who don't know, is a drug typically given orally to those who are in post-surgical uh, time. Uh, if you're able to take mm -hmm. drugs by mm -hmm. mouth, they typically give you ketamine. It essentially makes you everything happy. Mm -hmm. It removes all pain, and it, it, it gives you a sense of uh, complete uh, quiet and sedation. But if you take a little bit of it, apparently... Um, you get merely this euphoric feeling, and mm -hmm. that is the hole that you fall down. That they call mm. that's the, the what they call the K hole. So right. then, in this episode, Bruce and I both go K hole uh. to when, when Kelly lands on <laughs> yes, it. So we're, yes. we're very excited. Being burnouts, we're very excited for her. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so she she's still coming out of the K hole at this point. So yes. she's kind of into the party for a little while. But then you you definitely kind of get the sense, especially after her conversation with Pablo. Like, she and Ruby are both just done with this party. And then to have that great scene between the two of them where Ruby's like, where she's like, I'm sitting out here, and Kelly's out there being like, I'm trying to think of a plan because I can't just, the car's not coming here. The, we're not getting the book back this way. And Ruby's like, you're right. Let's go. Yeah. You've seen what my children can do. We got to put a stop to this. You're the hero, not Ash. I love that it was between the two women because, yeah. you know, you see that they are such badasses and yeah. Ash is lovable but a moron and they're yeah. really discussing that. Like, we've got way better ideas than this guy. Let's just do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. But I but I like that we don't lose, even though, yes, Kelly is such a badass mm -hmm. character, I like that we don't lose, you know, the, the emotional side yeah. to her as well because that's coming out of a, the conversation she has with Pablo where he's like, man, you're so impressive. You don't need anyone or anything to, to define your self-worth. And she's like, yeah, okay, sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> that gave me feelings. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. That's where the feelings began. Well, and I like, too, by the same token, in the same conversation, seeing a little bit of actual vulnerability from Ruby when she says, you've seen what my children can do, and I can't do this yeah. alone. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And as I predicted last week that I felt that Ruby may be more interested than Ke in Kelly than Ash when some people were trying to ship her and Ash. I'm like, I think Ruby is a ladies woman. Huh? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say after that scene, I was like, oh, I feel like there's there's uh, there's some Kelly Ruby shippers out there now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I ship everyone with everyone else right. on this show, except I think Ash maybe needs to do some introspection yeah. first. Yeah. What do you mean introspection? <laughs> He's too stupid to be in <laughs> You've got the wrong character. You're thinking of another show. Yeah. You're thinking of Power. That's an other star show. This is not that show. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'm not sure how much good uh, yeah. introspection would do no. for uh, fair enough. Fair enough for Ash. But yeah, it is. It is. It's always really nice, you know, when you have a show that has such complicated and interesting characters, and and you know, especially when they both happen to be ladies, having scenes where they interact with each other and where they decide they're just going to go team up and do things their way. So I'm uh, I'm curious to see uh, where where uh, that leads. Yeah, because we know Kelly was coming out of her K hole and intoxicated with the tequila. <laughs> Everyone's but using Ruby, that. I'm yeah. sorry I yeah. said anything. <laughs> it's like it's too much fun, and we can't say asshole anymore because Ash said not to since he was in one. Oh last yeah, week. that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah. because you know Chet's great life advice was drink your problems away. Yep. Uh, that's not a terrible advice to some people. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend it for everybody yep. in real life, but um, it does have its merits. Um, no, I'm kidding. Don't ever. <laughs> that's what my dad not? said. You guys are like, really? Man, you actors are crazy. <laughs> Drinking all your problems with... <laughs> you know, no, but yeah, Chet does think that. Yeah, but that's yeah. the kind of guy he is. You know, yeah. you also get a little bit of a hint though that he does have some things to maybe drink away. There's a reference to Saudi gold at one point. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, yes. Yeah, he does talk about Saudi gold. He talks about friendly fire mishap yes. uh, yep. during the Gulf War, uh, first Gulf War. He talks about uh, Anwar, the village boy, whom you don't know what happened no. to. Uh, yeah. Was he run over by a tank? Was God only knows. You don't even want to think about it. Um, yeah, he had some problems there, I, I suppose. And uh, 
uh, doesn't want to talk about him and drinks his problems away. So, but I think that may or may not come back in another episode. Of his his you know war experience may or may not be helpful. And is this so. based on a real person? Because this reminds me of someone I know back in Texas. Yeah. So I'm like, do you have a, a pick for who? You, you know, I on? think I yeah. think that I I'm glad it yeah. does, <laughs> and I'm sorry for yeah, you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that you if it's anyone you know, I feel terribly sorry for you. But no, uh, but uh, that credit probably goes to the head writer of our oh. show. Uh, Craig, Craig, yeah. Craig de yeah. Borneo, who who is a pretty pretty impressive guy, and he came up with that character yeah. of Chet, cool. this kind of everyman dope, yeah, you know, who was a war vet, who <laughs> uh, you know stayed in a small town. Um, so yeah, he created this guy. And I, I've heard that before. Uh, people are like, oh, it's really like a guy who yeah. who Press I can I can who I know. I think everyone yeah. knows a Chet. You yeah. know, the, yeah. they're, they're still in the town. You, you, he never left. Yeah. You know, and but you go back and you realize you never really want to be like Chet, but you still want to hang out with Chet a lot. He's yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. And a, and he's still a while being kind of a burnout, still a, a sympathetic character because as you say, it's it is that that guy that everybody knows. It is, and mm-hmm. and uh, I think you know he he Ash seems to like him immediately. So yeah. uh, they're old buddies, and I, we're going to find out why. I, I can't tell you. Right, of course. Uh, of the course. next two, three, four episodes, you'll find out why they're uh, they're such good buddies. So you'll, you'll see what happens. I'm, I uh, am very interested mm. to uh, Me too. Yeah. Find I haven't out, seen them. You think we get some special, you know, recompense <laughs> for being actors. Oh, here's your, all your episodes. We don't see jack shit. <laughs> they're like, can I see the episode? Yeah, go get the Stars app. Number, one. <laughs> yeah. number two, wait for it to come out. Three, yeah. see numbers one and two. Yep. And then we'll, we'll yeah. talk later. Pay for a subscription. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, that's it. Yeah. Get a free seven-day trial no, on Amazon. Yeah. That yeah. is that's true. Right. Yeah. Amazon is offering that. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, but uh, so the, the part is is going down and Ash gets into a little bit of an altercation uh, right. with his dad. Yeah, that's right. They don't have the... Uh, by the great Lee Majors, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, hey, Ash, uh, something I never told you. I mean, all that all that dialogue they have out there is so touching. It is, it is. Delivered by the, the, the inimitable uh, Lee Majors. I was so impressed you know. with his performance in Me too. this episode. Me I too. Mean, nobody, yeah, because look, that man is has had since Big Valley in the '60s has had cameras pushed into his face, and he's so comfortable at it. And not only that, but for almost 25 years of his career, he did all of his own stunts. He did not have a stunt man mm-hmm. until like in the late '80s. He was doing like Fall Guy. And in those days, he started to, but but all that stuff you see him falling off the horse, six million dollar man running in bell bottoms, all that stuff, he did it. That was all Lee. And so, I mean, man, you know, the fact that he's still here and that he has he he deserves a stunt man now. Yeah, That's right. Exactly. I don't. I have point. a stunt man. I don't deserve one. I mean, I I had my ass kicked in Ash for oh, excuse me, Evil Dead Two, yeah, Evil Dead a too. thousand other movies and TV shows I've done. Right. But I still don't deserve it as much as Lee Majors does. <laughs> Because that guy did his own stunts for 30 years. It's unbelievable. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Well, and also, you know, like Brock in this episode had such a quick change of heart. Now, it was very mm. believable, but I, I think that in the like in the hands of a lesser actor, like it could have come across as very fake when he went from, oh, I, you know, Ash, you, I, I, you're terrible. You took my daughter away from me to, oh, oh no, you were... You were telling the truth the whole time. It was the monsters that killed her. You're you're a hero, and I and and I as I say, I think that that could have that quick switch could have come across as a little forced, but it did not at all. No, yeah. it, it had me ready to roll genuine tears yeah. as I was watching, which I was not prepared for when I started watching this episode tonight. Yeah, yeah, it, that, neither was I. Yeah, it was pretty. It was it was pretty touching. It, they, those guys did a great job, and the great Tony Tilsey, who directed it, had a lot to do with it as well. He, that guy, can do it all. He, he's uh, both a terrific action director, a comedic director, mm-hmm. and um, a dramatic. Excuse me, a- action, comedy, and drama. He can do it all. And that's usually you find one guy can do maybe one of them well, you know, or one right. guy can do comedy well or action. But, man, he can do them all, and it's, uh, it's so rare to have a guy like that. I hope he's able to uh, come back for the, the uh, cast's uh, third season. He's a really tremendous guy. It is, though, like you say, you've got in the same episode this incredibly poignant father-son drama playing yeah. out, and within minutes of those scenes, you've got a possessed car literally throwing one of its own hubcaps <laughs> through somebody. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I, you know what I, I really thought was, was terrific, too, and was the direction and the writing was so good, if I may say, 
just for the car possession scene, and, and that is, we've all seen there. Well, most of us have seen some possessed car movies. Mm-hmm. Christine's a, a, a prime example. John Carpenter's picture, but um, in this case, the car behaves, and I got, also got to hand it to uh, the EFX guys, the post EFX guys, um, like a deadite. And not just a car that is rolling backwards and forwards mm-hmm. that can run people over, but it has supernatural powers in and of itself. It can tip on one wheel. Yep. It can throw its hubcap off. Uh, it belches smoke and fire. It yes. does these other uh, underworld yep. deadite things. So it really is a deadite car as yeah. opposed to just a car that is possessed. And so for fans of the show, uh, we did not rip you off. <laughs> so if you think, it's just that Christina, go screw yourself because you're wrong. So go rewatch it. You'll see it is a deadite. It's True. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. No, it definitely read yeah. as a dead eye car to me, and I, and the hubcap thing I did not oh, see coming. That was that's I didn't that. either. It was, it was surprise. It was tremendous. Yeah. Oh, and poor guy. Well, I did. Sh- I did read the script, so I kind of I didn't know. <laughs> I'm not telling you the entire truth, but I right. hadn't seen it till tonight, so right. it was really exciting. Yeah. 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 I love like crazy deaths like that. That's one of my favorite things about this franchise. Is like you think something's cool, like last episode where Ash isn't literally in an asshole. You're like, they're right, gonna, yeah, yeah, they're gonna do something else cool. Yeah, like, that was throw an all timer yeah. scene too. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, Ringy nine zero nine nine eight points out in the chat. Just going back to Ash with his dad. The moment that the dad knew the truth and was about to tell him something close to the end, I knew he was gonna die. Oh, and I, you're like, I, oh. I, I knew the moment yeah. that they started connecting that, that unfortunately, uh, Lee Majors was going to be a goner. I was like, nope, nope. I'm yeah. having, like, real genuine feelings about that. I actually have real genuine feelings about Lacey uh, and her boyfriend. When they say, I love you, yeah. I love you, too. The, oh, the, man. In the scene where he gets uh, flipped up onto the hood of the car and he's, like, on the windshield and he's bleeding to death, basically. Uh yeah, I yeah. like. I was like, these characters have been in this mm-hmm. show for twenty minutes. I shouldn't yeah, care a, about they're, them this they're much. Act, they're excellent actors, and uh, that's Rob Tapper, our executive producer, picked those actors yeah. and picked them. He's very specific about that sort of stuff, and uh, not surprisingly, Rob is a very visually oriented producer. Mm-hmm. Now, some some producers typically are uh, auditory, right. and so they're they're all about the words. Rob right. is too, right? But he's more about what it looks like and feels like and so that's why ash is so action-packed that's why his other shows like spartacus yeah for stars yeah. great storylines yep. rob does not skimp but man the visuals really Incredible. all have to be there yeah. it has to rock his world or he's gonna throw it out um so that's why our vfx teams are, are just you know overtaxed because it's 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 a rough ride to you know to to, yeah. to, to please stars it's, it isn't easy well and, and the vfx Two are so much of what makes the tone of the show so successful is that you yeah, you have so those those incredible, frankly, kind of ridiculous death <laughs> scenes where you know you got a hubcap going through someone's body and they like look down and realize they're dead as their like intestines are spilling out. Yeah, like, that's right. Awesome. But that but that's part of the horror comedy thing. And and if you don't have those like really graphic visuals it just it doesn't work you know yeah no you have to see it also the also oh, i'm sorry what were oh, saying? sorry no uh, there there's a there's a we're we've got we've gotten to a point in horror now right there's there's sort of two paths you know it's like mm-hmm. a robert frost poem and this particular path <laughs> Uh, is 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 the path you've traveled, which is it's torture porn, it's whatever that is, you know, it's right, just so right. much guts oh. and gore that you just can't you you're 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 immune to it right and then the other part is still visually gory but it's also absurd yes and that has to do yes and that has to do i think with the setup and that Mm -hmm. that's all writing and that's all how the actors play it and that's all how the directors delicately sort of have to balance all that crap so i think with any luck we're on the road less traveled at the moment yeah Mm -hmm. and not the road more and so i I hope we can stay on this road it's 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 a bit of a tricky road road to hoe too but um I'm uh, I'm I'm confident that uh, everyone over at that office is is going to be able to do it for another three or four or five seasons if they want. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the chat roll is loving it too. Julia L says the hubcap effect was kick ass, better than Christine. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a big deal. Yeah, because that's a great movie, Christine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hubcap thing, and and even just the you know, the amount of times that the poor guy who got his, you know, junk bitten yeah. off by deadites yeah. uh, got run over by the car. It was just like, oh, we're just adding insult to injury at this point. I don't think they needed to do anything else to have that guy's junk be bit off. Yeah. I think that was, 
That's about it. <laughs> Didn't just, need anything else. Just wandering around <laughs> without it. It's just the disturbing. Is over the back seat of the car. Yeah, yeah. it's disturbing. Yeah, poor guy. There was there was a lot happening there. <laughs> but uh, but yes, uh, all worlds collided uh, yeah. when the car, the Delta, uh, collided with Brock. <laughs> I and I too really should have known exactly what was about to happen. And yeah. I think somewhere in my subconscious, I knew the rug was about to be pulled. And yet, when it happened, I, I just started making noises, you guys. Yeah. Like I could not contain myself. Yeah. No, I got very te- I like got real teary eyed. Well, yeah, his brains are yeah. blown out basically all over the rug. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they they don't, I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> yeah, no, they I don't, don't even try to hide it. They're like, yeah, he's dead. And no, in you know, the preview. It's they're like, not dissolving into a peep. Yeah. Beep, 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 right. Beep, 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 beep. Come no. on, Brad. No, that didn't happen. No, no. It's no. Just, it's just like as soon as any time Ash like cares about somebody and emotionally connects with them, there's a good chance they're gonna be a goner, and uh, that that's true. Was certainly uh, mm-hmm. the case. Uh, um, at uh, Darth Kiko sixty nine on Twitter says, <laughs> I watched. What's his name? Uh, Darth <laughs> Kiko sixty nine. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, oh, I watched and I was really pissed off at the end, I'm sure, because of the uh, the death of uh, Brock. And then um, uh, skipping ahead a little bit to the uh, the after credits sequence, yes. uh, at uh, XChuckJX uh, said that PSA for pink fuck. I can't. You guys need to talk about it. So. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I don't know exactly why Stars wanted that on there. I would strongly <laughs> suspect... No, what's the, who asked the question? Uh, it's Charles J. on uh, Twitter. Charles J., I think there's a rather uh, in-your-face kind of answer, which is <laughs> kids may actually take that shit yeah. and lose their minds and, you know, think that. I doubt many of them will. Mm-hmm. I think you're all pretty slick. If you're watching Ash and you get the jokes, I doubt very seriously you're going to do this. But, you know, it does, I guess in one kooky sense, some people may get confused and go, oh, if I drink Special K... Then I can go fight monsters too, and my life will be awesome. It's really not the way it, yeah. it is. Uh, so it's probably not a great idea to do that. Uh, don't huff paint unless you don't have special K. In which case, do huff paint. Um, on the other hand, you shouldn't sniff glue unless you don't have paint or special K. In which case, you should sniff glue. Um, <laughs> do not smoke hash unless you don't have either of those three, or if it's Monday. <laughs> And all the hash stores are closed. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> no, we're gonna have to put a PSA no. at the end of this after show to be like, don't do any of those things, kids. But you sorry, drugs are fun. Kids. Was you can <laughs> also smoke hash on Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. Uh, anything else you guys want to uh, touch on before we roll into some predictions and whatnot? Unless everyone wants an idea for a drinking game, which predictions. Is also a You're talking about predictions yeah. for the show, right? Mm-hmm. That, because this yep. is the after show. Yeah, that's what we're mm-hmm. gonna you want do. Predi- you yep. don't mean like lottery predictions? Because no. that'd be awesome to hear. No, 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 no. We actually uh, we're gonna do our, our after right. Buzz TV predictions. <laughs> Sounds good. And now your after Buzz TV <laughs> predictions. <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a light show and it sounds vaguely like spaceships. Uh, Sometimes you have a like seizure. Or yeah. We have to warn you. That yeah, yeah. So predictions for the future. We did get a little bit of a preview on the end. It was more of a like, here's what else you're gonna see this season. Little little snippets of of uh, that. Uh, from what we've seen, I'm gathering we're gonna get a lot more uh, of uh, what has become of Pablo since uh, the Necronomicon merged with his face. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. It's a nicely put. That's yeah, right. well, that's what happened. So <laughs> it is, It's yeah. definitely something that occurred. Uh, I, I'm i going to double down on something that I keep talking about is something I'd like to see happen. We've been getting hints in little bits and pieces of, of things that are teasing what's to come in the season, and it seems like at some point Ash is going to be brought lower than we've seen him and my hope is that mm. in in that event it does give some of the newer players it gives ray gives dana an opportunity to really rise and assume a leadership sure. position an active leadership role in a way that they ash's ego has so far blocked them from doing failing that chet stops the deadites with an army of ketamine fueled soldiers <laughs> that he brings back over from his war experience i would watch that show that would be a fun show. <laughs> and we, we do know that Chet will be in more episodes since yes, he did not true. die. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do know also that uh, th- that uh, Brock had some important piece of information yeah. he was going to 
reveal to Ash that was going to change his whole life. Any any thoughts about what that might be? Oh, I'll tell you what it is. No, I won't. What do you think I want to get fired? What's the matter with you? Uh, what do you think it is? I think that... And I, I won't tell you if you're close. Yeah. But I will tell you if you're very far away. Okay. All right. I think that Cheryl may still be alive. I was, that was my yeah. inclination, too. Yeah. It has something to do with his sister. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, what do you think? I want to lose my job right. and be in the comments? Yeah. Forget it. Three guys, three goons from Stars are going to come over my house at 2 o'clock this morning and beat the shit out of me. I'm not going to do that. Crazy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, any other uh, any other predictions, Lex? Do you have a, a different thought on what no. you think? Uh, what do you think? The, no. the important information might be. Well, I feel like it has to be some type of family tie, right? It's yeah. not like Brock, Brock disbelieved Ash so strongly That's for so true. long that I don't think he's withholding any information about something supernatural. No. So, true. I mean, you were speculating about maybe, you know, maybe. Uh, Ash has a, a daughter, and I don't necessarily think it's uh, not, maybe not maybe not that specifically, but I think there is some familial tie that is as of now unknown to Ash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it did say which he would change the fabric of his existence. Mm, yeah, uh, you've got a daughter, maybe. Uh, that would be a well, shocker. Maybe, That'd be yeah. exactly. But fabric of his existence to me also sounds like maybe there's like some way that he can like go back and undo everything that's happened to him. But then it's like, sh then it brings up the moral dilemma of like, should you do that because all of your life experiences like make you who you are? I'm, I'm getting really deep now. So, yeah. You are getting really deep. deep. Yeah. But with regard to his daughter, yeah. I mean, you know, this isn't one life to live. This yeah. is Ash <laughs> Christie. <laughs> <Christina. laughs> so just settle down there, pal. Yeah. Okay? Save the soaps for daytime TV. We are an Ash for Seville Dead. This is we're talking guts, blood, time travel, that kind of shit. I'd love Cassie to pie, but come on here, though, just like she was in Evil Dead, too. Right, that's yeah. right. right. That's yeah. right. She might. You never know. You, you never know. know. You never no. know. Uh, before we uh, start to wrap things up here, I want to talk to you guys about iTunes. You can, of course, watch us on YouTube, as many of you are doing live right now. Many of you watch on YouTube after the fact, because this show airs quite late on the East Coast. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can also listen to us on iTunes, so you can, like, take the Ash vs. Evil Dead after show with you on the road when you're driving to work, when you're walking to school, whatever, wherever you're going. You, you can, can wear work. headphones watching this, listening to this show, go like mm -hmm. this. <laughs> Those guys. Exactly, it's exactly. Crazy. Yeah, and everyone will think you're crazy because you're just right. cracking oh. up listening to us uh, talk <laughs> uh, about this wonderful show. Uh, so if you are an iTunes user, please do subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, and if you would be so kind as to leave us an iTunes review, we always appreciate your feedback. It makes us look cool, it makes us look legitimate, and then we're able to get, you know, cool guests on the show like Ted. Uh, Thank you. Uh, so, and, well, and since I'm here, yes. can we talk about, uh, sorry, this was the, the, you mentioned that this was a season that one. was at the season mm. one premiere at uh, at the Chinese theater. So what if I told you this was... Well, how would you know the difference between the season one and the season two foam chainsaw? Well, because the, the ones that they had at Comic-Con were uh, blue foam, not black foam. Yeah, and I have both. I can do oh a comparison God. photo and I send it to I am with you. those kind of people tonight, yeah. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe this. Yeah. Are you serious? Is yeah. It really? Yeah. yeah, they're blue foam. That's crazy. So yeah. this is a, a rich, this is season one. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the OG that's right there. That's pretty yep. cool. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yep. Who, who knew? I, well, um, I did. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, I'll put them on both of my hands and I have legs. Take a picture. Be I like, just said it was cool. One. Yeah, just double, that. double chainsaw hands. Uh, yeah, so we don't have any uh, new iTunes reviews this week, but uh, when we do get them, we like to read them out because we mm -hmm. appreciate uh, you guys saying nice things about us. Uh, Ted, do you have any uh, projects that you're working on that you're able to talk about? Wow, no, no actually, yeah. I cannot tell you anything I'm doing, but to, to, and that's not God's honest truth. I will tell you that um, I'm finishing up. Uh, uh, getting funding for a picture that I'm going to shoot in the spring. Oh, wonderful. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's a thriller. It takes Great. place here in Los Angeles, California. Cool. So that's exciting. I'm sorry to be so vague, but that's really all, all uh, I can tell you. If I told you anymore, I'd have to send somebody after you. Right. I don't um, want that. to break this place lit. apart. Yeah. It'd be after <laughs> trash my TV so you couldn't get it there. Uh, but, um, but do watch Ash vs. Evil Dead. Yes. Um, uh, Chet uh, will reappear, yes. guaranteed. Uh, <laughs> in what form, fashion, I cannot tell you. Yes. But it's Ash vs. Evil Dead. Yeah. That's and, all I can and say. And you guys were just at uh, New York Comic Con this we past week. We were. Weekend. It was, it was uh, madness and wonderful. And uh, those New Yorkers are incredible. And uh, uh, they're, they're, they're um, everything you think New Yorkers would be. They're classy, awesome. And they all talk like this. Hey, I'm a big fan of yours, man. <laughs> you were great in all your television shows. So they're, 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 you know voracious in all the best ways you possibly could want a New Yorker to be. And they and it was just a 
fabulous city because the city takes you along. You don't have yeah. to mm. take it for a ride. Yeah. You know, it takes you for a ride. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again for uh, coming in and joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Where... It's been awesome being with all you guys. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, folks, uh, just a small announcement that um, this will be the very last time that um, After Buzz TV will have these hosts. <laughs> it's just the Ted Ramey show now. Come see me next week. I will be here. I love you. All of you. Thank you so much for being on my new show. I love it. Thank you. What are you laughing at? I don't know why you're all laughing. Why are you all laughing? I feel like, we watch that. Like, well, I listen I to that podcast. I almost wouldn't oh. be mad because I would yeah. get to watch that show. I know. It's like, oh, yeah, I, I can stay, stay home. Outside. I can stay home yeah. on Sunday nights and just watch the Ted Ramey show. Fine. Thanks for having me on the yeah, show, guys. Say, you guys. Thank you so much. In, in the event Thank that the you. Ted Ramey show doesn't happen, which obviously it's going to, where, where, can, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, they can find me at Ted Ramey uh, throughout the universe of the interwebs. <laughs> at T E D R A I M I on uh, all three uh, 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 all three platforms on there. So. Mm-hmm. Lucretia, how about you? Of course, guys. Since I'm Lucretia Lyon, you can always find me at L A C R E T I A L Y O N anywhere on the internet. Since there is only one. Lex Michael. I am all over social media at the Lex Michael with a V in case there is more than one. <laughs> and I am all over social media at Emma Fife, which is my name. I keep it very simple. E M M A F Y F F E. That is all F's as in Fred. Uh, if you are listening, F and S tend to sound the same on the phone or when they're recorded in a microphone and transmitted into your ears. So it's s mus It's always really, really fun when uh, I show up to a hotel where someone else has made a reservation for me over the phone. My last name turns into a weird combination of S and S's. At least people don't go, why are you white? Just ask someone why they're white. Anyway, thank you again to all of you for joining us in the hashtag and the live chat. Remember, you can keep talking to us using that hashtag, ABTV Evil Dead, to talk to us throughout the week, share your thoughts, share your thoughts when the show airs, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. We will be back here, bar- barring uh, <laughs> the uh, the continuation of this show, yeah. rather than being replaced with the Ted Ramey show. We will be back here at 9 p.m. again next Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Bye. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.